I just got back from a year-long trip through Eastern Africa and Southeast Asia. And before I left, I spent a lot of time thinking about the things that I would bring with me. So now that I'm back, I figured I'd go through the things that I typically carried on my person, the things that I carried in my main 46 liter pack, and the things that I carried in my day pack, which is inside my main pack. Now after a while of traveling, I came up with my uh, typical things that I would wear when I was taking a bus or a train. The Ex Officio Geo Trekker long sleeve shirt. Nice things about this shirt, one, it looks pretty normal. It's just a regular long sleeve button down shirt. It's made of 100% nylon, so it is uh, quick dry and very lightweight. It has a Napoleon pocket in the front, which is just a front zipper pocket. Very useful for carrying boarding passes, things that you just want quick access to. You also have extra ventilation, which was really nice to have in uh, a lot of the warmer climates. It's the Ex Officio Neo Amphi pants. These are a nylon, so they're quick dry. The um, Pack Safe Cash Safe belt. It has a long zipper pocket that you can stuff uh, a few bills into. The buckle is made of plastic, so it's safe for uh, airport security. These Scotty Vest travel boxers have two pockets, uh, one in the front and one in the rear, um, which you can carry a passport in, you can carry a phone in. With this in the pack safe belt, you can avoid um, you know, a hip pack style money belt. And lastly, the Chaco Z1 sandals. These are really multi-purpose. They allow me to you know, go hiking in them, go in the water with them. To go through some of the things that I typically would carry on me, the first is the PackSafe 100 travel wallet. Uh, as you can see, this has a security chain. Unlike leather, it can get wet. It has a small uh, pocket here, which I would typically carry uh, SIM cards in. The main pocket here is large enough, and it has a divider in between, which is nice if you're going between countries. And then a zipper. It also has an external zipper for a change. A small little notebook. It was handy for writing journal entries. It was great to just be able to jot something down really quickly and easily. On this keychain, I have a ink a pen it expands out into a full-size pen. It was handy to have during border crossings. A lot of times they don't have pens for you. As far as the camera, a Canon S95. The good thing about this camera, if you just want to point and shoot it, it'll do that well. The big selling point for me was that it has full manual controls over aperture, shutter priority, ISO. The other thing I have on this is a PackSafe camera strap. This lanyard detaches and I can have another one of these on another item and it's slash proof so it's just nice to kind of be able to loop it around your belt or something and not have to worry about someone pickpocketing you. Using the Galaxy S3 I can plug in a thumb drive, really anything that's USB into this. I really liked having that functionality. Internet in a lot of countries is very cheap compared to the US. I would just carry a spare battery with me. Of course headphones, these are just earbuds that came with my Galaxy S3, have a little microphone built into them. This is a 16 gigabytes on thumb drive uh, with a lanyard on it. If everything was stolen, I'd still have my pictures. This is a Timex rugged watch. It has a vibrating alarm clock, so that was really helpful for waking up in dorm rooms. So this is the bag I decided to take with me on my trip. It's the Porter Osprey Porter 46 liter backpack. It's a good size. It's carry-on compatible. It has these compression straps. It also has hideaway backpack straps. These can be tucked inside here if you want to check the bag and it has a waist belt which can also be tucked away. Now I noticed that the back structure here wasn't very strong. It actually started to crease if I didn't you know put the weight uh, in the bag correctly so I decided to add a little bit of extra support. Um, I bought this little um, this kind of plastic board from a craft shop so that kind of fixed the issue for me. Now in the top of the bag, a few things. So first, this is just a, an Amazon like electronics bag that you can put a camera in, but I have a padlock in here, and I use this padlock all the time. So I use this for lockers. I'd use this if I wanted to attach this bag somewhere, um, tie it down. So really recommend a combination lock. A really cheap basic alarm clock. This is a flexo line, closed line. You can pinch the clothes in here so you don't need um, any clothesline clips or anything. And this is an REI rain cover. And lastly, I have this little Purell uh, attached inside. 
On the outside, I have this clean canteen. You could keep Chex Mix or something in here. It fits like a regular size 20 liter drink. Here on the outside still, there is actually a little zipper pocket. So this was really nice just because that you hold documentation that you might occasionally need. Um, I just kind of tucked into here. It's not really noticeable. It's kind of like it looks like a little secret compartment. This is a REI TSA compatible cable lock. Now this is my day pack. This is a Scotty Vest micro fleece hoodie. A lot of times buses, even in warm areas, they turn the AC on really high. It has a lot of extra little pockets on it, really comfortable. And here is the Katadyne My Bottle water purifier. I thought I could use this in some of the areas where they wouldn't have clean water, but I found bottled water was really easy to come by. It does have virus stat, little insert in here that you can take out. I think it can be handy for some people, I just didn't end up using it. Next, have a first aid kit here. This is the Marmot Precip rain jacket. It just tucks into its own pocket. I used it both for rain, but also in areas where if it's cold and you want to prevent the wind, then you wear the micro fleece and then this on top of it. Pretty good looking rain jacket, multi-purpose jacket. This is the Eagle Creek Slim Toiletry Kit. It has a hanger built into it. This mirror also is removable, so it has a little Velcro strap. In here, just have hair stuff, deodorant, and this was really handy. Just a trimmer, but it does have, it's an adjustable and you can take off the top completely. And overall, I never really shaved, I just used this. It uses regular AA batteries. Another couple things in here, I have the toothbrush, full-size soap container, and for shampoo, I actually use just J.R. Liggett's shampoo bar. These are carry-on compatible. Um, I just prefer to actually bar shampoo. I tried it on my trip and I, I still actually prefer this type of shampoo. I use Eagle Creek Packet Cubes to organize all my clothes. In this, this is called the Half Cube. I would keep a towel. This is uh, one of the kind of quick dry towels. These are the ex officio um, boxers. Four to five of these was, was plenty. These are just running shorts. They can also be used for like, you know, on laundry days. For socks, I recommend kind of the smart wool style socks. So I have three small pairs of these and two longer pairs. And the nice thing about this packet cube, this is the, again, the half size cube, but it also is the version with two compartments. So when things would get dirty, I would throw them in the other side, and this is, you know, separated from this zipper pocket. Now in my full size cube, that's where I keep all my shirts and pants. I have a free cotton shirt that I got at a hostel. This is uh, just a regular polo shirt. It's worth having something kind of smart that you can wear out to a, to a bar or club. These are the ones I typically wore in Africa, but um, they were quick dry shirts. This is merino wool. It was actually a little too warm, um, as you'd think from wool, but overall it was a good shirt. REI shorts. These are Columbia pants. Similar to the ex officio ones, but they were comfortable, quick dry, nice kind of nylon pants. A pair of Columbia water shorts. I liked them because they were multi-purpose, but most people wear regular bathing suits, so it might be better going that direction. And lastly, just a pair of, um, of dockers. Going out in a nicer place, um, where I'd wear a polo shirt, you have the option of kind of some nicer pants. So I eventually did buy jeans, but um, uh, you know, you, you kind of want to find that balance depending on the area that you're traveling. And as you can see, this also has the other side where I'd keep all the dirty clothes. Last main kind of clothing piece are my shoes. So I keep this in the Eagle Creek shoe compartment. The thing I liked about these, they were good for hiking. Um, they're trail running shoes. So they, you know, were actually quite waterproof. So I really liked these shoes. I would typically wear my Chaco sandals, but um, I'd have these packed away in certain cases where sandals weren't, wouldn't suffice. Other couple pieces um, that I have up here in the top. This is a silk a liner for a sleeping bag, but this is nice for areas that don't have uh, sheets. So this is the basic long sleeve shirt, a uh, Under Armour shirt. I only used it occasionally, but it was great to have in those situations. On this side pocket, so this is the only other main compartment uh, or side compartment in the um, in this bag. This is an REI. I think 18 liter flash pack. Great for laundry and other things, and again, didn't take up too much space. Um, you can flip it inside out. 
and it has these compartments so you can use it as kind of like a stuff sack. The insect repellent DEET lotion was, was helpful at some points. In this bag, I just have some kind of rollover electronic stuff, extra, you know, a long power cord for my laptop, um, you know, an extra little flash drive, extra chargers. So this is kind of just miscellaneous stuff. Extra Ziploc bags, they come in really handy a lot. And a shoulder strap for my bag, because this could attach to the side here. And the last thing, this is a PackSafe camera bag. If I was in a place that wasn't that secure, I could throw in my camera, I could throw in my passport, everything into this, and it's just, it's a portable locker. So it just cinches up like this, and then you loop it around and put the lock on it, and it secures it to any, like, immovable objects. It's also slash proof, so it has actually a, you know, wire going through here. Now initially I left with an REI Flash 18 pack, which was fine for size, but since it actually didn't have much of a structure to it, it was kind of hard to find some of the things inside. So while I was traveling, I just picked up a regular backpack, and inside here I have a 13 liter Sea to Summit EVAC dry sack. The nice thing about the EVAC version is once you seal everything inside, you can just push the air out of it, which prevents having an air bubble caught inside. And the 13 liter size of this dry sack was perfect for my 13 inch MacBook Pro. It gave me a little extra functionality when it came to doing some photo editing. It was had a great screen size in my opinion and it also has a CD drive. The other thing that you'll notice is that it has a leather protector on it. It covers up the Apple logo, draw a little bit less attention and it has a little bit of cushion to it. The only other item I have in here is the Google Nexus 7. It will um, allow you to back up photos online, it will allow you to web surf, and you can plug in extra things into it. So I can plug a flash drive into this. In my front pocket here, I kept the Goit Design uh, utensils, and as you can see, it's a spork and a knife. I keep canned foods with me sometimes in my bag on a bus trip, and uh, this is perfect for that. The knife is sharp enough to cut through uh, small fruits. The UltraPod tripod just slides out like this. I could use the Velcro to fasten it to uh, a railing or something to take longer uh, exposure shots. The Samsung GT B2710 GSM phone. It's a waterproof and shockproof phone. Basically it has like a very light version of Google Maps. So it has the GPS integrated into it. It has a very uh, basic camera. It has a torch as well, which came in very handy in some of the areas with unreliable power. If you don't want to travel with a smartphone at all, this is a very good compromise. I also have this Buffalo Technology portable hard drive, a place to back up my photos, to have a couple movies and documents. So it's shockproof and it has an integrated USB uh, cable. And this is an OTG cable which would allow me to plug a standard size USB into the Nexus 7 or into my Galaxy phone. And attached to that I have this SD card adapter. So I could take my memory card out of my camera, plug it into this, plug this into my Nexus 7, and back them up uh, onto the Nexus 7 and even onto the internet if I wanted, onto something like Dropbox. Now this little pouch came with my Ducks Pack um, rain cover for my main bag, but I ended up keeping a lot of electronic items in it. First thing is the Kensington power adapter. I just would expand the appropriate adapter depending on the country that I was in. And this worked for all the countries I was in, in Africa and in Asia. And this is a New Trent USB-AC power adapter. So this would just plug right in here and this would give me two USB ports. It has a output of 5.1 volts, 2.1 amps. It's a pretty quick charge. This is the Griffin USB adapter kit. USB to micro USB, USB to mini USB, USB to Apple. I could plug any of my devices in without having long cables with me. I just had this one extension. This is a backup battery. It would allow me to charge a phone a couple times. The last thing here is my power brick for my MacBook Pro. In this top pouch, I have one extra USB to micro USB cable, and this little keychain just had a set of small tweezers, a true key tool. It has a teeny little screwdriver, 
and more importantly it has a bottle opener.